Hello everyone and welcome to Black Friday where discounts stretch as far as the eyes can see. And so does the weekly news. Sort of. Right, kicking things off with multi-choice. DSTV has been known for some heavy repeats of shows and movies over the years. And a couple of their Twitter followers called them out on it. DSTV went on to say, and I quote, we actually have the lowest repeat rate in the world. There is no question about it. Every time a supplier comes here or a third party channel, Aleta, which is the general manager of content at MultiChoice, will say, What more have you got? How can we bring people more content and reduce our repeats? And we are always told that our repeat rate is incredibly low. They even went on to highlight that South Africans watch too much TV at around 5 to 6 hours a day. So what they are trying to say is, if I pay for my DSTV, I can only get the best experience when I watch it less. Funny thing is, We Are Social's Digital report for 2019 quoted that South Africans spend a mere 3 hours on TV a day. So who is watching the other 3 hours? Life is tough, ne? Even for EcoCash, life has been tough. The upgrade really went quite badly and the team is still going through damage control. Just look at this queue of queries that they had on Monday this week. They issued out a statement the same day highlighting that new transactions are now going through fairly smoothly, but also went on to mention that they are currently working on a backlog of transactions that didn't go so well. So if EcoCash chopped your money, <laughs> then this might be some sort of good news for you. Um, it's now just a matter of days or weeks. Just have faith. Something that will take less than weeks is ZBC launching their very own 24 News Hour channel. The channel will be aired on DSTV as well for even more coverage because their airwaves are only limited to Zimbabwe, so DSTV will Get them across the continent. Hopefully it will actually launch end of November. Wait. This weekend is the end of November. Interesting times we are in. More interesting is the Higher Life Foundation chipping in to keep Zimbabwe's medical scene somewhat functional. Unless you have been living in a cave, doctors in Zimbabwe have been on strike for over 80 days now because of extremely low wages and lack of sufficient medical supplies to carry out their duties. In response, through what they are calling a scholarship fund for doctors, the Higher Life Foundation is pushing for a training fellowship for junior and senior doctors employed at a public health care institution in Zimbabwe. This will be covering doctors undergoing a junior or a senior resident program and will run for six months. And to keep the doctors motivated, they shall be getting some awesome perks that include a non-negotiable but currently very viable subsistence allowance of up to 5,000 Zim dollars, only payable upon proof of you being on duty every day of that particular month. They'll also be getting a smartphone which will come in handy when they need to utilize their Via Carpool vouchers for three free via trips a day. Those who are interested can visit their nearest Higher Life Foundation office available in Blawayo, Chinoy, Gweru, Harare, Mashingo, Mutari. Great timing considering how we are entering the festive season. The rise in traffic accidents and general emergencies does require a healthy number of doctors on standby. What a way to incentivize! While on the topic of incentives, we have Telesel on the other end offering an extra $5 to their protesting employees. Five Zimbabwean dollars. This raises their daily transport allowance to 25 Zim dollars. Now to bring in some context, the Telesel employees held a sit-in protest at the boardroom for better wages. They got a $5 increase in their transport allowance and Telesel CEO went on to say that they are working on reviewing the salaries and something might happen mid-December. 
Yeah, things are tight at Telesil. In fact, things are just tight everywhere. Two government hacks this week alone. Imagine. The latest one is actually one involving EMAP, which is a website parents use to secure Form 1 places for their kids. The cyber criminals pretty much got access to two accounts, which is Rusununguko and Anderson High School, respectively. This allows them to intercept information from parents applying to these schools and in turn, they're informing them that their child has been awarded a place and they need to deposit the funds into the given bank accounts. It's just so pathetic, considering how tight things are financially for like 99% of Zimbabweans, as well as the desperation that innocent parents have to get their child a place for their next educational frontier. Hopefully these guys are caught, but at the same time, this shows how very unprepared this nation is when it comes to matters of cybersecurity. The government should just do a bounty on the integrity of their key websites against hacking, highest reward and job opportunity to the person who finds a backdoor and successfully patches it. It's not that hard. But what is hard is having to go because I am out of news. Have an awesome Black Friday. Bye.